welcome to all of you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a pleasure it is to see all of you here today. Um, be sure to note that in the bulletin there is an announcement sheet for you to look over the announcements. Um, of course, a major announcement is that following worship today, we will be sticking around for our annual meeting and then going to have a fellowship luncheon, a potluck luncheon following the meeting today. Um, I have a letter from um, the three bishops, the ELC bishops uh, from the state of Illinois um, to read the congregation. This January, Illinois entered its seventh, seventh month without a state budget. No one anticipated a budget impasse of this length. Lutheran Social Services of Illinois is in the challenging position of responding to the deadlock's impact on our ability to continue providing services to those in need across the state. At this time, the state owes us more than $6 million for services delivered. Over the past months, LSSI has been using a bank line of credit and available resources from our Cornerstone Foundation. As we worked with the state regarding non-payment for services provided, LSSI leadership began exploring options to restructure our programs and contain costs. At this time, it has been necessary to cut 758 jobs, to cut ministry ministry programs, including those that serve senior adults, those that serve drug and alcohol rehabilitation, and community counseling services. LSSI urges Illinois residents to contact their legislatures and the governor's office to let them know how critical it is for them to pass a state budget. During these challenging times, LSSI is grateful for the many people who have offered their continued prayers and support of our mission. And of course, we have an LSSI counselor here on site during the week, and our prayers go for that programming too. Other announcements today, obviously the big news here is that we have 11 young people who are receiving Holy Communion today for the first time. And many of them have brought family members along with you, and so welcome want you to know that here at St. John's that Holy Communion is open for all of you who trust in the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. And you can come forward for either a blessing or for the elements of communion. Um, the wafer of bread will be placed in your hand and then you can dip it either into the grape juice, which is dark purple, or the wine, which is more of a, of a yellow color. Um, we're pleased to have you here with us this morning. And so we begin our worship. is in Eucharist. In the night in which, in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. Bread. Many grains of wheat brought together into our community, transformed by community into bread. Nourishing, life-sustaining, earthy, gift of the soil, body. In the same manner, Jesus also took the cup, wine, many grapes, pressed into community, transformed by the intermingling into wine, rich, thirst-quenching, spirit gift of the sun, blood. We are the gift of the soil and gift of the sun. We are earthy, we are spirit, we are bread, we are wine, we are what we eat, God's body and blood given and shed for us. Thanks be to God.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed Lord God, you have caused the Holy Scriptures to be written for the nourishment of your people. Grant that we may hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that comforted by your promises, we may, be, we may embrace and forever hold fast to the hope of eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Are there any children here today who'd like to come forward for the children's message? Come on up. Good morning, Mel. Thank you for helping out today. Anyone else? Come on up. Okay, today we have a lesson that comes from the Bible. It comes from a letter that St. Paul wrote. He wrote to a church in a place called Corinth. Good morning. This place is far, far away, but St. Paul was trying to keep in touch with his churches. And he was hearing some things about Corinth that he wasn't happy about. So he tried to tell them in a gentle way how they should act. And he was talking about what the church is. We just sang a song about that. We are the church. And he said we have to think about church as being like our bodies, all different kinds of parts that work together very well. What kind of parts can you think of that are in your body? Yes. Organs in the inside, yes. Your heart, that's one of the organs. Yes, cold. Your bones, right? We need those, don't we? Well, think about it. Think about all the parts of your body. Yes. Your brain, an important part, right? Yes. Pardon me? Your skull, yes, that holds the brain and protects it, right? Well, Paul said to his church, he said, think about it. If one part of the body decided it was more important than the other parts, what would happen? What would happen if the nose thought it was the most important part. And pretty soon a church got to be nothing but a nose. Your body got to be nothing but a nose. What would that look like? Wouldn't be very pretty, would it? No, it'd be kind of slimy to be close to, right? Not very nice. Think about the other way, Paul said. What if one part of the body decided it was not good enough? What if a foot said, look at that. I'm not as pretty and looking good as the hand is. They don't need me around me here. They stuff me in shoes all the time and hide me away. So the foot would leave. How would your body be without a foot? No, you'd not easily walk, would you? You'd not easily even stand because you'd tip over, right? So what Paul was saying is we all have to work together. No one's more important than other. In fact, you are young and I am old. We're both just as important, aren't we? Right, we're all part of God's church, right, and his love. And when one of us hurts, all of us hurt, right? Like parts of your body. If a toe gets bumped, doesn't the whole body hurt? So when we think of our body, think of our church. Our church is like our body. We all work together for the good of it all. So let's say a little prayer. Thank you, dear Lord, for giving us this lesson that we learned that we're not a big building, we're not a fancy church. We're the people in the church who love you and honor you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. It's time for children's worship. If there's anyone who wants to follow Maria over that way, Okay.
morning. The first reading is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 through 31a. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot were to say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear were to say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect, whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread throughout all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Jesus had been out in the wilderness for 40 days. Then, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned to Galilee, to his hometown of Nazareth. It was a Sabbath. Jesus was in the synagogue, as was his custom. A leader of the synagogue handed the scroll of the Holy Scriptures to Jesus. The scroll had been opened to the prophet Isaiah. It was where they had left off reading from the week before. So Jesus took the scroll and began to read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to re proclaim release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, handed it back to the leader of the synagogue, and he sat down. Now all the eyes in that place were fixed upon Jesus because they were waiting for his interpretation of what he had just read. So, would Jesus preach about the past? Would he talk about how their ancestors back there in the time of Isaiah, how they had envisioned a world of justice, of freedom, of healing? Or would he talk about the future, you know, about one day, when the freedom, the justice, the healing that was promised to them, when that would come about? When the Messiah came, the Anointed One, the Savior, oh, they were so longing for that. But instead, Jesus shocked them all by saying, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Today. What do you mean, today, this scripture has been fulfilled? Have you been paying any attention, Jesus? Have you any kind of awareness of all the frightening things that are happening around us? Why, there is more inequality than ever, Jesus. More neglect of the poor than even a year ago. More people are in prison unjustly. More violence and terrorism is here than our ancestors ever knew. More wars, rumors of war, that are uprooting rooting people from their homes, causing them to be refugees. How can you say 
today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. What is Jesus telling them? Could Jesus really have been saying, look around, see the spirit of the Lord at work right here? Could Jesus have been saying that living in the hope of God's promise is not about yesterday? It is not about returning to the good old days. It's not about waiting for someday and that eternal life in the kingdom of God. Today, today. The word today holds a deeply spiritual reality that salvation from God is intended for today. And it begins through Jesus Christ. Now, it is certainly true and even appropriate that both the past and the future hold significance in any community of faith. But by emphasizing today, Jesus transformed Isaiah's prophecy into a powerful invitation for the whole community to understand that both those fond memories of the good old days and those dreams for the future are to be laid aside for life today. Today. To act on behalf of God's justice and peace and healing now. Today the scripture has both been fulfilled in your hearing, Jesus said. He said that for the benefit of the people who were listening to him that long, a day, long ago day in Nazareth. But I also believe it is a message intended for all the generations, including us here today. Today, Jesus reminds us, is our time. It's our time to act on behalf of God's healing and justice and peace. So we look around this morning to the gathering of the faithful and to use the words of St. Paul that Mel so graciously helped us understand earlier. Together we are the body of Christ and individually members of it with Christ at our very center. We in this congregation of St. John's are called through baptism to be the living and present body of Christ, working together in unity with all our diversity to make God's promises become real in our world today. Just as our human bodies have many parts that make up the whole, so it is with the body of Christ, the church, St. Paul reminds us. Each one of us, young, old, in between, all with a huge variety of abilities, has an important place in the body. On this annual meeting day, when we consider the ways that we together as the body of Christ make God's promises become real in our world here's what I'm wondering what part of the body are you? what part of God's ministry are you claiming? are you and I do you see clearly what needs to be done here in the church? Do you see clearly what needs to be done in our community? Do you notice people who are hurting? Do you have an eye for beauty? And are you able to creatively capture that beauty 
by inspiring and artistic creations? Are you an ear? Can you hear the voices of suffering? Or can you hear God speaking through music in order to share that gift with others? Are you a hand? Do you like to get projects done with your hands? Or maybe, maybe you're good at holding hands with those who are lonely. Are you a foot? running errands? Are you a mouth offering your smiles to the world? Are you a tongue telling others of God's unconditional love for all people? Whatever it is that we are, each one of us is important for the benefit of all of us. When any single one of us is absent or decides not to contribute as a part of the body, we all suffer. There's less joy when one laugh is missing. There's less generosity when one heart is missing. There's less wisdom when one brain is missing. Here's the good news. Jesus has appeared on earth and through his death and resurrection his living Holy Spirit is here right now with us. We are never alone. We have Jesus here and we have been given the gift, the holy gift of this magnificent community of believers ever-changing community, ever-adapting community, ever-being made new, together with Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the midst of this community of, of believers, we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah as spoken through the voice of Jesus, that God's promise of hope and freedom, healing, and love is being fulfilled in our hearing today. Amen. gathered together by God's Spirit, 
We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Grant unity in the body of Christ, your church. Replace dissension with reconciliation and strengthen its witness to the world. Lord, in your mercy. Within your creation, when your creation is harmed, all suffer together. Guide your people to make wise choices that protect the land, sea, and all life. Lord, in your mercy. Put an end to strife, violence, and hate in nations where there is turmoil. Guide leaders and movements for change to seek peace above all else. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for Lutheran Social Services of Illinois and ask you to guide their leaders as they struggle to remain faithful in difficult economic times. Lord, in your mercy. Be present where there is loneliness. Be comfort where there is pain. Be healing where there is brokenness, including those we name in your hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Grant health and night and life in this place. Send us to share the good news of your abundant love in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the young people receiving their first communion today. Bless them in their lives of faith and guide them to always trust in your saving love. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for the faithful departed who have come to know the fulfillment of your promises. Assure us of your hope until we join the saints in light. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share Christ's peace with each other. So we do this. Yep. Peace be with you. Thanks so much for helping out today. Peace be with you. 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 Yes, peace be with you. Peace be with you. So glad to see you. You're looking so nice today. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Merciful God, as grains of wheat scattered upon the hills were gathered together to become one bread, so let your church be gathered together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. For yours is the glory through Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets, hopes, and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people, fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, is now ready. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, that you have fed us at your banqueting table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious upon you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. sang way too fast and I couldn't get my self change. We're going to go directly into the annual meeting. Um, I know that there are some pictures that want to be taken here. I don't know what your plan was for that as far as the First Communion pictures. Sunday school children, we have a place for you um, off in the chapel and um, and so the rest of it, I invite you to stay, um, if, if at all possible. Um, I'm not anticipating the meeting to be long, but let's, um, let's make those few transitions here right now. And um, by 10 o'clock, we should be ready to roll. That's three minutes. Okay, go in peace, serve the Lord.